Hello there and welcome along to this webcast. My name is Des Kelly from GMIT Letter Frack and during this session I will run you through the material we covered at our SOLIDWORKS seminar which was held during this year's Techno Teachers Conference. Now just before we begin, if you'd like more information about the degree programs we offer in GMIT Letter Frack in Furniture Design, Wood Technology and Teacher Education, then please visit our Facebook and Twitter pages. Now something else we do very well in GMIT Letterfrack is teach a wide range of industry standard computer aided design and computer aided manufacture software packages. And the software package we'll be focusing on today of course will be SOLIDWORKS. And if you want more tutorials uh, please visit the newly launched GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel where you'll find a whole range of tutorial videos covering everything from introductions to sketching up to advanced surface modeling techniques. Uh, here you can see just some of the tutorials that will be uploaded in the coming weeks. Um, as much as possible, they'll be relevant to the Leave Insert assignment uh, for that year. But um, what we're going to focus on today is a series of features that will be relevant to this year's Leave Insert assignment. Now, this blender is my attempt at this year's assignment, and it will take approximately two, two and a half hours to draw. And it's a lot longer than I want to run these videos too. So um, in the coming weeks or the coming days, I will actually upload to, to the GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel the, the video tutorials showing how this is drawn from start to finish. But for today, we're going to draw this vent. Now this vent, uh, it's pretty simplistic looking, but it houses some very quirky and useful features. So we're obviously going to get the basics out of the way, the extruded boss base feature. But to generate the image I see here, we're going to make sure and draw this vent as a multi-body part. We'll use a simple shell feature, but we'll stick the two bits of the, the fan together, the separate bodies of the fan together, using a lip groove feature. We'll generate this vent with the vent feature. I also want to run you through how to apply high-quality decals, and also uh, the settings that I like to use within PhotoView 360. And all of these, I feel, will be relevant to this year's Blender. Okay, so let's begin. So moving over to SOLIDWORKS, I've opened up a new part and I'm going to begin by starting a sketch of a rectangle. Now I'm going to pick the center rectangle and I'll begin drawing this on the front plane and begin by snapping the center of that rectangle onto the origin and let's dimension that to have a size of 200 by 200. And I also want to ease the corners so I will put a sketch fillet Radius 10 mil on all four corners. Just simply click the four points. Press the green tick to approve the sketch fillet and the green tick to approve the sketch and then close out of the sketch. Okay, simply apply a normal extrude. So features, extruded boss base and let's bring that to a height of 50 and okay that. So I want to hollow this out, so to do that I will use the shell feature, make sure I set the wall thickness to 4mm and simply click the top face to remove that face. Press the green tick to approve the shell and we're set. So the next thing we want to do is uh, add the lid and I'm going to do this here as a separate solid within this part rather than creating a new part and stitching them together in an assembly. So to do that, let's begin a new sketch on that top surface. And I always like to just open a line command just to make sure the sketch actually fully opens. Sometimes the sketch does not open until you actually open up a command such as line or circle. And if you wanted, you could draw the perimeter of this shape again, but the handiest way of doing it is just click Convert Entities and close the sketch. It actually has created a sketch going around the perimeter of this solid for us. So now we just go to Features, Extruded Boss Base, select that newly created sketch, and we will extrude that to a height of 20. Now that will just simply create the new material, but it will weld it or stick it or merge it onto the existing piece of material. So I want to right click that feature and edit it. And instead of leaving it merged, I want to deselect Merge Result. Approve that. And by doing that, it simply creates that new uh, material as a separate solid. It also creates a new folder in the Feature Manager called Solid Bodies. And if I expand that, 
I can actually select each of the solids independently. I'll perform a slow double click on this one and call that base and a slow double click on this and call it lid. It also allows me to right click one of them and hit the little hide icon and I can work independently on each of them. So that's what I want to do here. So I'm going to use a fillet. Let's set a radius of 5 mil. Click the face. Apply a fillet there. And let's apply the shell feature underneath again with a 4 mil wall thickness. Okay, so turning back on the base. I now see if I run a section through that, that it's just a simple butt joint, but at least I have two separate solids. So to apply a lip or a groove between them, I'm going to use the lip groove feature, which can be found up here under insert, fastening feature, lip groove. Whatever is highlighted in blue in the feature manager is what's needed next. So if I hover over that, in this case it should say select body component on which to create the groove. So let's say I'm going to pick the top from my groove. The next thing becomes highlighted in blue. Select body for the lip. So I pick the bottom for the lip. The next thing that's highlighted is a, um, a selection that's required if to, to, to govern the, the vector, the, the direction of the groove. So what I will do is simply pick any line that's going vertically uh, upwards in the direction of, of my groove. So in this case, I'm going to pick this vertical line there, and it'll satisfy it. So the base now disappears because we're now working on the groove selection. This may sometimes be selected already for you, but what it's asking you for here is the face on which to create the groove. It's essentially the face that is common between the two solids. So I'm going to click that face. It doesn't actually move on. You've got to now click the second white box and select the edge. In my case, I want the edge here, the edge that's going to house the lip or groove, the groove in this case. So it gives you a little preview there of the groove that's going to be removed. I will then now move down to the lip selection. Again, sometimes this selection is also uh, made for you. If, if, it, if it already has selected the face in there, then brilliant. If not, Rotate it around and select the face. Again, it's the common face between the two solids. That face in this case. Then move down here and select this box, which is going to prompt you to select the edge again, this time for the lip instead of the groove. And remember, if the lip is on the inside, the groove will need to be on the inside. So I will click the inside here. And it also previews, in this, previews, in this case, the little groove that's going to be sticking up, or the lip rather. So if you press OK on that, it takes a moment to, to run through it usually, and if I now run my section tool again, you can see it's created a lip and a groove for me. So if I right-click one of them and go Edit Feature, uh, something I haven't spoken about yet is all the parameters, the dimensions governing the thickness and the width and the size of the groove can be changed here. For instance, I can change that 1 mil back to 0, apply that, and you can see there's now no gap between the, the two solids themselves. Right click it again, edit that, and let's just set that to half a mil. And now you see there's a half a mil of a gap. So you can make any changes you like there and it will be reflected and updated in the model. So now let's have a go at the actual vent feature itself. And to begin with, we're gonna start a sketch on the top surface or wherever you want the vent feature to, to be. And to save time now, I'm not actually going to uh, specify dimensions. I'm just going to put a series of circles on to represent the, the, the ribs of the vent. And I, in my case, I'll use a three-point arc like that just to lay out some spars. And I'll use a circular sketch pattern to make sure I get let's say eight of them and press OK. So whatever shape you want the ribs and spars and bits and pieces of the vent to, to, to look like, uh, that's the sketch that you draw. And remember, all of that has to take place in a single sketch. So if we go to insert fastening feature vent, we can then select the boundary first of all, the outer limit of the vent, which is there. Then moving down to ribs, 
activate this top portion to select the ribs. In my case, it's those three circles. I do not want to select this inner circle. Then highlight the spars selection window, which will allow me to select all of these three point arcs. And then finally for now, uh, highlight fill in boundary, which will allow you to select this center circle there. So press the green tick to approve and you can see there's a few little errors uh, at the center um, those three point arcs transition correctly but they stop uh, short of actually extending onto the, the, the fill in boundary. Also I'd like to thicken up these spars a little so right click the vent feature, edit feature. What we can do is, um, I beg your, yeah. so first of all we change the, the ribs, you can actually change the size over here on the ribs, the spars. Uh, I want to change the spars, say, to 2 mil for now, and also their thickness down, let's make that 5 mil. And you can see you can edit the, 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 the height and the thickness of all of those pieces as you wish. So what I want to do now is right-click the vent and edit the sketch, or rather expand out the vent. Find the sketch, right-click, edit sketch. And one of these three-point arcs, the first one I drew, it's locked on there, so click that little green concentric or coincident uh, constraint, delete it. Now you can drag in the original sketch to the center. Of course, you could dimension that correctly if you wanted. I'm not going to now to save time. And now you can see at least that little gap has, has disappeared. So there's the vent feature. What we do now is simply apply some materials. So if I move over to the Appearances, Scenes and Decals tab, press the push pin to make it stay open. I'm going to find Appearances, Plastic, High Gloss Plastic, and I'm going to make mine white. So drag white plastic onto the top, making sure I apply that to the body. And just to do it a little differently, I'm going to maybe pick a light grey plastic and drag it onto the body of the bottom. So I want to talk you through now the um, settings I use for PhotoView 360. So to activate these, I will go to Render Tools and Options. First of all, over here, the image size, I always like to set it at least greater than 1,000 pixels because if you set the pixels very small, when you scale up the image, it will always pixelate. So set that pretty high, but uh, certainly above 1,000 pixels. I'm never, really, never that bothered about what image format I use. Most of them work okay. I tend to leave it at JPEG. Moving down, the preview render quality, I tend to leave at better because it's not that important. The important one is the final render quality. I normally leave it at best. The only time I ever move it to maximum is when I'm rendering a lot of transparent materials such as glass or clear plastics. It will really increase the processing time, but you, you will notice the difference um, when, when you do that. So apart from that, they're the only uh, settings I actually change. Just make sure you set this final render quality to best. And one other thing we did discuss at the conference is uh, the fact that from 2009 onwards, the lights, some of them are turned off by default in PhotoView 360. So if you press this Display Manager icon, then the third icon down here, the View Scene Lights and Cameras icon, here you can see the three lights are turned off in PhotoView. They're grayed out. So right-click on in PhotoView, right-click on in PhotoView, right-click on in PhotoView. If you want to see those lights, right-click any of them, show lights. They're locked. I cannot edit them. This is actually not going to give a good render because the lights are projecting up from the bottom. So I want to edit those. So right-click, edit all lights. I should now be able to select those. And as you select them and drag them around, the shadows will change in real time. So it's not an exact science. There's nothing really I can say that will, there's no tips I can give as such. It's just a matter of dragging those until you get the shine and the gleam that you think is right for your project. Now those lights do stay there unless you right click and deselect show lights. So just before I move on and apply the decal, I just want to add a small radius fillet, let's say 0.2 mil to the top face. And I just found it, it tends to help the renders when you ease a lot of these real sharp corners, because in reality, uh, this certainly wouldn't have a sharp corner there. It would be eased slightly. So to add the decal, I'm going to go to Render Tools, 
edit decal and browse to find the image I'm after. I have one saved to my desktop. Uh, a preview will get loaded in here and now it's up to you to select the flat surface that you want to apply the decal to or the curved surface but a surface that you want to apply it to. I will click the top surface there. It'll do its best to put it in the right position for you but it, it very rarely gets it right so um, click the corner drag handle to resize it. Click anywhere within the frame to drag and reposition it. And click and drag this either orange or blue um, uh, grip to rotate it. So press the green tick and the decal is applied. Interestingly, if just a lot of people don't know how to remove the decal, there's a number of ways of doing it, but here, click it, find the little appearances icon, press the drop down arrow and press the little X beside the, the decal. I don't want to do that. So just to preview what I've got, um, preview window. And you can see, even though the plastic itself is white and the sticker itself has a white background, and it looks okay here in the graphics window, when it finally renders here in a moment, and it does take a, a second usually, you'll see that there's a clear difference between the, the two. Just gonna take a second now. So you can actually see clearly that it is a sticker. So if you want that sticker to be transparent, let's now remove it, click it, appearances, press the X, sticker comes away. I'm gonna actually open up PowerPoint and use PowerPoint as an image editing tool. And in PowerPoint, I'll bring in the picture. And if I zoom out by holding control and scrolling on my mouse wheel, I can drag that out into the gray area and you can see it, it actually, it looks clear in here, but out here I can see a white background. So to remove the white background from an image, simply double click it, select color and set transparent color and then click the color, in this case white, that I want to remove. I now have a, an image with a clear background. So right click it, save as picture, and remember you have to save it as a PNG. A JPEG will not remember a clear background, but a PNG file will. And now I will go through the same process again, but this time use that new image. So edit decal, browse, it's on my desktop, it's this new picture, click the surface. Now it does come in slightly different. It comes in this time with a black background. And it just means that the computer is trying to save a bit of processing power and not render in real time the clear picture background. But if you want it to, simply click use decal image alpha channel and now it's going to do that for you. So if I now run my preview window, you should see that the image will be a lot neater. It'll look as if it's a just painted on it. It shouldn't have the background of the image visible. And sure enough, it doesn't. While we have that image, you can see because I've dragged the lights up, the lights are doing their, their job. It's actually projecting a shadow of the vent onto the, the inside of the vent, which is also um, what I want. So when you've that done and you're happy with the preview window, remember the preview window is going to give you a snapshot of what your photograph, what your image is going to look like. Then simply move along and hit final render. So in my case, if I wanted to make a cover page out of this, I could um, put the vent over to one side like that. And as soon as you're happy with what appears in this window, then hit final render. Depending on your settings, final renders can take anything from a few seconds to hours. But if you want the, the quality, and certainly this year with the blender or anything that has a clear background, I would recommend, not clear background, but, but clear components, I'd recommend you upping the quality of the render to the, to the maximum. So after you wait for the uh, project to render, you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. It should be quite realistic when you apply the final render. And as I said earlier, a lot of the features that we've used to draw, draw this are applicable and relevant to this year's DCG assignment. So hopefully you found it useful. 
Again, I'll mention that uh, we have uh, started to populate our new GMIT Letterfrack YouTube channel with a wide range of videos. There's going to be more added every single week, so uh, please keep in touch and keep a check back to see if there's anything there useful for you. So, I hope you found this uh, useful, and we'll talk to you again soon.